someone else. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned serendipity, mm -hmm. and there are lots of people who are talking about how she's been sequestered for 15 years, and then they contrast her opening speeches and then her um, forthcoming interviews, and then they say that Clinton's experience <laughs> of foreign policy is similar to her experience of foreign policy. Do you think, and then of course the whole she's a heartbeat away from being the president, do you think that people are voting for her or are they voting for McCain? Let me, let me just, uh, let me, first of all, nobody votes for president because of vice president. That's number one. There's some truth to that. I would make, I would posit a following argument. The vice president, she'll pick, uh, tends to, tends to symbolize, is the candidate's respect and the party's respect for a particular region or a particular idea. If you look at that, it's pretty, fairly consistent. Okay? So I, I would say the following about Sarah Palin. First, I would say that Hillary Clinton, having served the United States Senate, has a hell of a lot more foreign policy experience and decision making experience than Sarah Palin. Uh, Bill Clinton, yeah, as the governor of Arkansas, I mean, the, probably the most the most difficult international problem he had to deal with up to then was whether he was going to have a border war with Missouri. I mean, you know, that'd be right there. You know, <laughs> all things being equal. Um, I would not compare Sarah Palin to Bill Clinton, who had been a governor for a long time, solved a lot of problems, took on educational reform, a whole bunch of other things in his state, created an economy in, in, in I think, northwestern Arkansas that didn't exist before, and a whole bunch of other things. So I wouldn't compare the two. What I would say about Sarah Palin is very important because it relates to what I said before and because it's important for you to remember as, as people think about these things seriously, which you all apparently do, you wouldn't be here on a rainy day. She is Nixon in new form. What do I mean by that? She represents that class distinction that I keep talking about, the bias. That's why she's so excited, these guys. She puts, tell them I'm not here, puts a shotgun over the shoulder, Go eat moose or whatever it is she does. She goes, <laughs> goes hunting and, and laughs at the boys back east and says, look at them making fun of me. I'm better than they are, and they, we're all, they're making fun of all of us. That's what that's about. That's why she boosts. That's why she gave the ticket a bump. Not because she's Sarah Ballin, because of what she represents. The Western attack on the rest of the elites on both coasts. Brilliant. McCain accident that turned into brilliance. Do I think she's going to get elected? The answer is no. Why? Well, never mind, she's wacky. But besides that, <laughs> besides that, you're not going to get elected because the ground game is going to win this election. Why? In t here's a non anecdotal, just my hunch. In 2000, well, in 2004, John Kerry got 80% of every black vote in the state of Ohio. Okay? In 2008, Barack Obama is going to get 98% of that vote. If you look at Hamilton County, take the Shabbat Congressional District in, south, in southeastern Ohio, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati Right? 27% of that district is black. What's going to happen? Those numbers are going to go through the roof, considering the police violence and everything that's gone there. Other instances that are around the country, those numbers are going to go astronomical, because they're going to get mobilized, right? It's going to change that dynamic. So Sarah Palin excites that base of 500,000 I'm talking about, but ultimately, it may not be enough for the Republicans to win. Yes? One more? Okay, you got to go to work around here, right? I'm not going to work. I'm going to sleep, right? Yeah, I'm scheduled for sleep first. Go ahead. Hi, Julian Connor. I actually work with Ron 5W. How lucky. <laughs> On that note, um, in terms of the mobilization, I kind yep. of piggybacking off that idea. How much Rosenstone was the political scientist who wrote it. Mobilization, this book about mobilization, what he says in the book is that the party's failure to act requires that individuals and other organizations take action. And that's why people turn out, because they're mobilized. Yeah. How much do you think technology is going to play an X factor in this game? The Obama yeah. girl, for example, Facebook, things that maybe structured formal campaign stuff. Okay, I, I, for one, um, there's a guy who's obsessed with the net, um, Roche, Andy Roche, Andrew Roche, who ran for public advocate, and I had a horse against him, killed him, but he's been yelling at me, and he keeps, he doesn't like me, so every chance he's, you're just trying to protect your business, when I say things like, well, when you put an ad up on YouTube, you really ought to identify who did it, you know, it's called, if you got to do that in television, you really ought to do it on the internet, he's, you're trying to stop free speech, though, no, I believe the internet works, I think the web works, but not in that way. Because you can't put a computer on top of your head and say, okay, the web is now telling me to go vote. You need a human being to bang on the door and say, get your ass out there. What yes. about Facebook? Facebook? Look, I'm not putting my face in there because I don't want to scare people. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it is a way to connect people. Does it, I believe that virtual communities at every level of political campaign, above the level probably city council, have some value. The larger campaign, the greater value they have, and they ought to be done more quickly in the course of a campaign, because our campaigns are now going 
If you're running for president, you're running for 18 years. You know, if you're running for, no, seriously, you're running about a year and a half to two. Governor, you're running about a year and a half to two. Senator, you're running for two years because it takes time to get the money. So you have to have a staff to get the money, so they got to do something else in the meantime as well, so they get their money's worth, right? So virtual communities and building them are very important. Do I think they're going to impact turnout? The answer is no. Do I think they're going to impact interest? Yes. Is interest turnout? The answer is no. You get turnout, hello, I know you're interested. Come out! Okay? And you grab them until they're tired of coming out. Why? Because democracy has to be a not, has to be a, not a spectator sport, but a participatory effort. And the problem with Facebook and that technology, going back to Robert Putnam and Bowling Alone and all that other stuff you've read or heard about, you got to get people interested, you got to get them involved, you got to get them away from entertainment. Democracy requires commitment. I believe in bipartisanship, and I believe in commitment, and I believe in participation. And I thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you very much, Hank. But I just want to add at the end, as at the beginning, while Hank talks about presidential campaigns, 